It's, it's an inherent disagreement on what YouTube is supposed to be. It's not about good versus bad content. I don't think I make art. I have never once made the argument that my content is highbrow, intellectual, beautiful content. I've just made the argument that it doesn't fucking matter. Reaction commentary. For most people, it's just another genre on the platform, but some out there think content like this should be removed from the algorithm entirely. 25 simple and cheap hacks for your beauty and health. Like this foot looks like crusty SpongeBob, okay? If you have enough dead skin on the bottom of your foot to take an X-Acto knife and start cutting chunks of it off like a piece of toast, you got a problem. Depending on who you talk to, this reaction commentary has caused quite the stir. Take the beginning of this tweet chain by John Swan, for instance. Reaction commentary is probably the biggest piss take genre in the commentary community, mostly because the creators, if you can even call them that, seem to be nothing but lackluster in the production and scripting of their videos. And this is the kind of stuff we're gonna talk about today. Reaction commentary is just another branch of the commentary genre that has grown much bigger in the last few years. While it boasts a number of very successful creators, it's also undoubtedly the most hated. But where does this come from? Well, these channels have a history of growing to tremendous success in a remarkably short time. Their channels like Scrubby, Benji, and Cyrus, just to name a few, they all do this while avoiding traditional commentary do's and don'ts. Every video is 10 minutes long, there are shitloads of ads, low effort content, and the reaction videos are historically disliked from the start. Reaction commentary from the core basically says, fuck your rules and your ethics, all while pulling in a shitload of money. And well, who cares? No, seriously. Who the fuck cares? There's a branch of elitist commentators who despise this practice for a variety of reasons, and they would have you believe that Scrubby is like a fucking serial killer if it means that you don't give his content the time of day. Holy shit, no, I, I really wasn't kidding. The issue here boils down to what these elitist commentators call abusing the algorithm. This, of course, is a made-up term that means reaction commentators are doing something morally ambiguous to siphon the viewers all to themselves. That's because for as long as the commentary genre has existed, there's been a rich history of creators making up their own imaginary rules and guidelines. Some of these, for example, were you couldn't have a Patreon if you were over a certain subscriber threshold, if your thumbnails were bright and colorful and shiny, eye-catching, it's clickbait. Ambiguous clickable titles are also frowned upon, and also, unless you're Jack's films, you can't have paid product placements. However, as the platform changed, these imaginary rules set in place have become less and less followed. As you probably could have guessed, these made-up rules mean next to fucking nothing, and it just creates a market for more continued grandstanding and looking down upon on the creators who just choose to give themselves an advantage. If you're having trouble following exactly what I'm saying, picture the algorithm and subsequent AdSense as a beautiful woman. Creators like John Swan are respectful to court the algorithm and treat her real nice. And then Scrubby, who just happened to have a sick new car smoking a cigarette, pulls up and rips that algorithm away. Just like in real life, Nice guys finish last. It looks like a lot of them just don't care. It's not about the editing or how long the video took to make, it's about the personality, the originality, and in my eyes it shouldn't be pushed to the front of YouTube. Sure, this can be classed as a form of content, it doesn't break any guidelines, but for what it is, they have minimal to no thought process or personality put into the video, so to me they're just very, very overrated. So just because they don't put the same effort as your content, they shouldn't be placed or promoted in the algorithm? It must be nice looking down at us peasants from your pedestal. Uh, was there like a six editor prerequisite I was missing on my homework? assignment, this is where the argument really starts to go off the rails for me, and a bunch of other people too, because here's the hard truth. You're not entitled to views based on effort. Your video could be a well-edited documentary and get 10 views. That's just how the cookie crumbles. There's no effort-based participation trophy to be seen. And just because you pay six editors to make your video perfect doesn't mean that it's going to pay off and make your investment back. 
Few analytical commentators have been able to produce this next level content and actually grow at a consistent basis, and the ones who do are mega talents. Not everyone can grow into Colossal as crazy, and if you're looking at making YouTube a career, then he's probably the worst fucking creator to look up to. He literally does everything wrong from a channel growth standpoint. Many of these YouTubers who are small and are trying to grow really want to make this a career. We're at like Adpocalypse number three and revenue isn't as prevalent while your position on the platform is no longer something that can be taken for granted. This makes it all the more jarring that people scoff at guys who are quite literally succeeding in making that career. Just because Scrubby made it and didn't follow your made up commentary ethics guide doesn't mean that he doesn't deserve to be there. This platform was built off Fred's high-pitched voice and people pointing a camera at a TV for fuck's sake. Stop trying to pretend YouTubers are more important than we actually are. There's no higher standard creators need to be held to. If you don't feel like a creator puts effort into their content, that's fine. These people aren't above criticism, but nowhere in the YouTube terms of service does it say that there's a certain level of effort or production required to succeed. These guys hinge their arguments on saying these people make their money from bad content, and when questioned about that bad content and what it is, John Swan comes back with an argument my grandmother would have made 15 years ago about why I shouldn't sit down and watch cartoons on a Sunday. And don't tell me there isn't any animosity from these creators, because there absolutely is. But especially a guy called Cyrus who reached 400k subs in just a few months from just these videos. That's, you know, no biggie really. No biggie. 400k, whatever. It's, it's cool. It's whatever. It feels nice to know that despite the hours and hours of effort I've put into my videos, I have not even hit 100k and many of them have passed 300,000 subscribers, like it's a piece of cake. Pity me. This brings us to the main target of today's video, Just Destiny. The proud owner of a channel with 1.6 million subscribers and, coincidentally, some of the worst content on this site. And before you go and tell me that it's just because they post quickly and they get their content out faster and it's so much easier to produce, okay, let me stop you there. These channels are often referred to as Leafy clones by your community. And in case you missed it, Leafy isn't on the platform anymore. This means there's a vacancy. There's a market for this kind of content, and people stepped in to capitalize on that market. What YouTubers fail to remember is that these social blade numbers that we talk about all the time, yeah, these are people. These people fit into demographics. They have different tastes. YouTube can promote content all day long, but a human being has to click on it. And just because you aren't the target audience doesn't mean this content is valueless. There are millions and millions of people who happily digest this content and Reddit content daily. And unfortunately for some, it's popular. I've seen some truly hilarious things come from genuinely small creators attempting to critique these million sub YouTubers and recommend them how to quote unquote fix their content. You don't sacrifice 55% of proper conveyance, you compromise. If circumstances are different, then you change it. If the formula doesn't work, you change the formula. Literally anything besides reading off a screen or playing Fortnite would work. A static image, fucking anything. Our brains are tied more to something like this than shit like this. It's this unwillingness to do the bare minimum that makes this type of content stay bugging with how much it's in my ear and shit all the damn time. Guys, if the formula doesn't work, you change the formula. <laughs> I mean, you have to be fucking kidding me. Clearly the formula works just fine. There's nothing quite like a sub 20k YouTuber lecturing a million sub channel on the algorithm, all because they had a conversation one time with Nerd City, and suddenly they're a fucking expert. I've talked to these guys in private, and they mean business. Far more professional than any commentator coming from the broader commentary community that I've spoken to. This is why nobody respects us. This right here is why nobody takes the commentary community seriously. Because you people get into constant semantic debates about shit that doesn't fucking matter. Then you small guys follow around anyone with a hint of talent, then immediately begin to look down on creators who don't conduct themselves on his ridiculous standards. But this stuff isn't just in videos. I've been in these communities. I've been in these group chats. The animosity goes far behind the scenes 
where you almost can't be friends with these guys. They're pushed from all these circles because they simply don't conform to the unrealistic imaginary rules. I mean, friendships end over reaction commentary. I truly believe reaction commentary was the deciding factor in Just Destiny getting publicly executed, but Susie Liu getting away with a flagging spree. If Susie Liu was a reaction commentator, I'm sure we probably would have cracked down on her more. And I mean, don't just take my word for it. Yeah, that's just a guess. But here's a video of Jay Aubrey exposing Loki for allegedly getting pics for underage girls. That's fucking disgusting if it's true. I don't know. I haven't researched this situation, but I have never in my time on the platform seen a creator who actually fucking criticizes. They stop to criticize a person's content before they make something as serious as pedo allegations. But if manipulating your fans, doxing your friends, and backstabbing fellow creators doesn't put you up there with some of the biggest goddamn leeches on the site, I don't know what does. Loki, or according to his Twitter handle, Loki is daddy, is a commentary channel. And despite boasting an impressive 160,000 subscribers, his name is not as recognizable as you would think. That's because he's not just a commentator, no, he's a reaction commentator. Which means he just sits down in front of a cheap mic and, well, I'll just show you. You guys know the girl named, uh, Lauren Gray? And he disappeared again. Holy shit, she broke the picture frame. Yeah, some, uh, some, some top-notch comedy right here, boys. Jesus fucking Christ! I mean, that's fucking hilarious! And the justification for this is the loose connection that reaction commentary puts you in front of a young audience. Therefore, that's how he did it. Which, by the way, most fucking avenues of YouTube put you in front of a young audience. Because unlike weirdos like me, most adults don't give a fuck about the drama content we put out. But let's talk about that, because this has been a hot button an issue too. Scrubby is a reaction commentator who has openly come out and said that 13 year olds pay the bills and John Swan had a particularly interesting take on the situation. I can't stress this enough. Nerd City's video on Jake Paul states that his amount of product pushing and advertisements would be illegal to broadcast on television in the United States. That's it. Literally nothing about broadcasting in this situation pertains to this discussion at all. There is nothing wrong with having a target audience and that target audience being children. If it was, then we should fire up some lawsuits and subpoena Nickelodeon, Toys R Us, and any other company that makes its money from primarily marketing to children. You're acting like Scrubby is the cigarette industry using subliminal marketing techniques to make children smoke because he clickbaits. Like every other fucking genre on the platform. The only problem with this theory is that the product he's pushing doesn't even hurt kids. It's a harmless video that just happens to appeal to children and that bothers you. The only thing reaction commentary is hurting is you because your eight videos in 12 months can't possibly compete with your competitor. And whose fault is that? Why do we have to blame YouTube as a platform because you don't want to follow what the algorithm is? If the formula doesn't work, you change the formula. I know I've already made this comparison, but you guys sound like a religious mom in 2002 telling her kids they can't watch Yu-Gi-Oh because of satanic imagery when it's just a harmless show about a card game. But do you know what really drives me nuts? It's shit like this. All these YouTubers have shown throughout the video fit somewhere within the reaction commentary spectrum. Some are acceptable and some do some are acceptable and some are acceptable and some are acceptable and James Marriott is allowed to do reaction commentary because they like him. That's it. That's the only reason. This guy gets away with fucking murder. And the same people who demand that we need to bring justice to Just Destiny over his suggestive thumbnails give James a free pass over sexualizing an 11-year-old girl in his most popular upload. But it goes deeper than that. People often criticize creators like Cyrus for being a copycat, and James copied his video down to the fucking thumbnail. This literally just happened. So as long as you're friends with these elitist assholes, you're clean. You're above criticism. But for the guys who aren't, well, you're not as lucky. You get lit up for literally fucking everything. And what's worse is that these kids stay in the comments of any kind of video criticizing them, talking about Good video, man. Honestly, it's definitely true we can take some criticism. I've been trying to move away from the leafy style, but it is hard when it does so well. Respect your opinion, bro. I definitely think there's stuff we could do better. Bitch, who the fuck is stopping you from doing it right now? Scrubby, I know damn well you watch all these motherfucking videos on yourself. 
Let me know who the fuck is holding a gun to your head and preventing you from making content that's not complete garbage. Here, and I shit you not, was Scrubby getting shit for being too nice! And understanding in a response to Slacker TV. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> These guys don't even give you a crazy reaction and they act understanding so you fire up a video and blast them for it? I can't make this shit up. This constant campaign against reaction commentary is hilarious. The arguments these people make are hilarious. The amount of grandstanding that goes into these hot takes is hilarious. And at the end of the day, some people have fun making low effort content. At the end of the day, some people don't value their content as art, but are proud of the accomplishments they have along the way. At the end of the day, some creators value making money over hour long documentary content with six editors. And it doesn't fucking matter. When you hear the word scumbag, what YouTuber comes to mind? That's because he's not just a commentator, no, he's a reaction commentator. Which means he just sits down in front of a cheap mic and, well, uh, I'll just show you. If the formula doesn't work, you change the formula. Literally anything besides reading off a screen or playing Fortnite would work. A static image, fucking anything. Our brains are tied more to something like this than shit like this. It's this unwillingness to do the bare minimum that makes this type of content stay bugging with how much it's in my ear and shit all the damn time. They're, they're ripping each other off. It feels nice to know that despite the hours and hours of effort I've put into my videos, I have not even hit 100k, and many of them have passed 300,000 subscribers, like it's a piece of cake. Pity me. Basically, Leafy, but in 2019, and more so than ever, a video is played in every 10 20 seconds. The commentator adds their very insightful input and thoughts on the video being played, but especially a guy called Cyrus who reached 400k subs in just a few months from just these videos. That's, you know, no biggie, really. No biggie. 400k, whatever. It's, it's cool. Hey, Nicholas Diorio, we in this shit, son?